Today we're going to explain the operation of the oil stack switch. If you got one of these on your oil furnace, it's probably pretty much an antique. We've uh, stopped using these things about 35 years ago. They're still available you know, on an aftermarket basis. Uh, what they do is they extend this probe into the vent pipe. This is uh, mounted on the smoke pipe, uh, holes drilled in it, this is slid in and it's uh, the set screw is tightened. So this actually senses the temperature inside the uh, stack. Now it has to start out cold. And this is a bimetal right here. This bimetal extends as it warms up. So when we get a call for heat, this is also a kind of a J box for all the wiring for the uh, furnace. Uh, thermostat controls here. I will get a call here for heat and it has its own power uh, transformer. There's a little transformer in here so it's its own complete power source and if the uh, bimetal here is cold then it will allow the furnace to start. At that time it starts up a heater. It's located inside here and as the stack warms and the bimetal stretches, uh, it proves that there's flame because there's heat in the smoke pipe. When it moves up far enough, it will shut off the heater. And then the furnace will continue to run normally. If it doesn't warm up within, this is a 70 second uh, control, if it doesn't warm up in that 70 seconds, the timer will shut the burner off. This red button will pop out a little bit. And uh, in order to fire again, you must manually reset this uh, red button. Uh, they don't try twice or three times, they only try once. So if there's a failure to sense that uh, heat, you know, the burner didn't come on, uh, the probe set it up, something like that, then it's going to shut down and you could reset it and it will try again. We don't recommend you reset these things more than once before trying to decide what's wrong with it. What happens is a lot of times, if there's a sooty fire, this will pack in here with soot. Soot's an extremely good insulator and it will insulate this bimetal from the uh, stack temperature so it will not move. Uh, during a service these are usually pulled out. This is cleaned. It doesn't take much to clean. Just knock it on something hard and the soot all comes off of it and it's pretty much done. There is one caution when you do that. You will probably do what's called knocking it out of step. That means the bimetal hasn't come back to its original position. Remember I said it had to be cold? So it had to suck out to its original position. So you can see that little lever right there that moves with it. When that gets out to the original cold position, uh, then it will allow it to light. If it's part way down, it won't. And when you take the stack switch out, clean it, and put it back in, it's probably going to be out of step. So all you really need to do is move this. Give that thing a little push. Uh, sometimes I'll have to pull them a little bit, but give it a little push like that. Generally, it'll just start up immediately and begin working. So that's a stack switch. Uh, they're only on older furnaces. Uh, they're still around. This is actually a fairly new stack switch. Um, and uh, they're still used on furnaces. However, no new, new furnace has had one uh, installed in probably 35 years. Okay, we will be moving on to part 8 and we will examine the uh, CAD cell and the CAD cell relay next.